So the discussion points in relation to question three are on page 16 of the tutor's brief. And this is really to draw out as to whether there should be charging or the offence has been committed under the criminal code, under the substantive provisions there of stealing and forgery, or it should be charged under the ETA. Remember under the criminal code, the definition of stealing is if a person dishonestly appropriates a thing of which he is not the owner. So here, the 5,000 CDs, uh, the question you will recall was that Stephen believed the bank email was legitimate and therefore the proceeds, the 5,000 that he was asked to send by clicking the link was 5,000 um, CDs after his PIN, card, PIN code had been taken. But equally, let's look at the ETA, and that specifically provides at 107 the adaptation section 124 at paragraph A to anything done using an electronic processing or procuring procedure system. So here, uh, looking again at our facts, Stephen has provided his PIN code, and that has been used to secure the 5,000 CDs. Um, so therefore, by providing uh, his PIN code uh, via clicking the link, um, that money has been stolen from his account. Also consider that the ETA at section 115 uh, adapts the forgery provisions of the Criminal Offences Act. So uh, forgery apply with the necessary modification using um, any electronic process. Well, clearly here an email has been sent and you may think that's the most appropriate offence in relation to the phishing email having been sent. It's also relevant, let's look at the um, Anti-Money Laundering Act and section one. Let's open that on the website and we can see Section 1, a person commits an offence of money laundering if the person knows or ought to have known that property is or forms part of the proceeds of unlawful activity and the person converts, conceals, disguises, transfers, conceals or disguises the unlawful origin or acquires, uses or takes possession of the property. So the person who sent the email has committed money laundering if they knew or ought to have known that the property, I had 5,000 CDs, is part of the proceeds of unlawful activity. Well, the unlawful activity here is either the stealing, uh, the dishonest appropriation of the 5,000 CDs, or the sending of the forged email from the bank. And then the money laundering is by taking possession of that 5,000 CDs. So you have the three different elements, the actual stealing, you also have the forged email having been sent, and then, of course, taking possession of the 5,000 CDs um, under Section 11C of the Anti-Money Laundering Act 2008. Of course, remembering that at all times the Ghana Code for Prosecutors applies and is there a prima facie case. So look at the points to prove and apply that to the facts, working closely with the investigator in terms of the uh, available evidence.